Hey everyone, welcome to another Dator Tech Solution video. In this video, we want to discuss how we can determine whether any coordinates um, locates uh, within a given distance of a reference point. And that reference point could be a center of city. Like in this example, as you can see in my blog, I have a picture when you can, you can have your use case when your reference point could be a center of city in this example and you want to see any other coordinates in your data such as the red red point here whether they actually exist within a specific radius from that reference point so this is simple um, script simple uh, code project win with data using python um, tutorial and actually what we have here let, let me activate this uh, this is the step by step the code that we are have here everything the step by step clarification the code itself the data as an example will be available for you to fully download from our blog the information available in the description of the video um, in this video we want to uh, explain this step by step and then you can take it away and customize it based on your need So the first step here is some your initial setting that you need to do. Import the necessary package in the Python and also connect the code to the place the directory when your data exists. So your data in this case, in this example, let me actually first show what data I have. So there is of course some sort of reference data that you may have and you could have multiple reference data. Let's say you have um, there are some cities and this is, let's say there is some reference records from those cities and in this case I have the coordinates comma separated for this um, random cities that I have and the main data is the second tab here is actually again there could be any data when you have a column coordinates and you want to see where they are whether they exist in a specific distance from your reference points right um, so it's, it's one uh, sort of a polygon uh, or shape file actually um, cross-referencing and rereading in, in the way that we, we do in this um, in this tutorial and at the end the output of your data could be something like this that essentially column D to J is the ones that we actually get at the result of the code at the end when I'm explaining step by step how we can actually get them is that you can get uh, indicator columns true or false whether a specific point exists within a, a specific kilometer or miles of a reference point from Vancouver Victoria Edmonton Portland different cities that you have and of course I have it like this in white format because a specific point could of course overlap and exist in multiple ray radius because the cities could be close to each other but um, the way that we have of course uh, it would be easy for you to um, customize the output if you wanted to have um, a different type of final output in your data but let's go over to a step-by-step -step guide that we have here so the first step is the packages that we have the first part is essentially most of the time for simplicity and better clarification in tutorial the sample data that I use it either exists in Google Drive or Google Sheet, a spreadsheet that um, different technicians or learners or professionals with any backgrounds uh, can use. So in this case, my data exists in a Google Sheet and I want to um, connect it to the Google Collab or to the Python environment where I'm using. So this is the method that I use. You may want to use any other method. So this is what I have and there, of course there is more video here that will put the link if you want if you're more interested to see uh, specifically the connection to the data from Google Collab or in other environment and other Python related tutorials. So have a look at those. Um, now the libraries that we use are here specifically these are the libraries that we use um, to make our calculations for uh, calculating a distance by any, any point to our reference point and uh, create our flag whether they exist in that radius uh, distance or not um, so this is actually where uh, the data that I showed you this is where we read them um, so I had two data my reference data and the point state data from the special data spreadsheet I call this reference data and points data here from now on now let's overview the data in step two um, this is the overview of data I have it comma separated coordinates let's say in simply you could just um, copy those coordinates maybe from Google map or maybe you have it such, uh, like this in your data if it's comma separated then um, you may want to have this step that 
uh, essentially what I'm doing, I grab these coordinates and I separate them and put them in two different columns, latitudes and longitudes, when we can use it because we need to have them separated. If your data is already separated, then all good. And then there you go, I have latitude and longitude. Now, one thing you want to make sure uh, you're on top of it is that you don't want to round up the number of decimals for latitude and longitudes because then you, you get the wrong coordinate. That's why it's important to see what type of data column you use here. So float 64 does, does the job. It's, it looks that way that it's already rounded up, but it's actually not the case. It's just the display. If you actually look up the reference data itself, the data, you can see they are all right. They are not rounded up. This is exactly the same number I have here, but something to have in mind. Points data, I do the same. I separate them out. I have latitude and longitudes. So this is actually your main data. The question is each of them, each of these rows, whether they exist within a distance of your reference point. And you can have multiple reference points in this example that um, is the case. Step three is actually the main step. Now you, have, uh, you define your main function here. That's the function I call it locator flag, which is essentially what it does. It takes away the reference um, coordinates. That's the reference uh, longitudes, reference latitudes, and your data coordinates. You could have any number of coordinates here from the points data, longitude and latitude. And the two other um, uh, parameters here, one is the distance that you want to make, let's say in this example, I'm interested to see in my geographical data, whether they exist in the 50 kilometer from the center of uh, center of a specific cities that I had. And the distance you need, you can have it uh, based on kilometer or miles, both of them works in this example, and we can see actually how it works. So in this step, what we do, we get the reference coordinates and put point coordinates and based on some sort of geometric formula, we may we calculate the distance. Um, uh, one of the parameters that goes into the distance, and we call it C. I'm, I'm not going to go into more detail on there. Um, next, this is the part that we look at the distance unit uh, parameter. If it's kilometer, then we need to uh, specify uh, the radius of the Earth is one of the parameters here. If it's kilometer, it use this number. If it's miles, it use this number, which uh, takes care of it. But if we provide, and the default is of course kilometer in this as as we specified it. But of course you can change it if you want. And um, there you go. And of course if uh, it's something else, then it gives you error that distance unit should be either key, km or m for kilometer and miles. And this is where we do the calculation. So this is the actual calculated distance between the two points that we have. And they should be, if they are bigger than R, uh, then they are not located within that distance. If they are smaller than they are. So that's uh, based on the geometric calculation that we do. And this actually, they um, give you the result. Um, now, now that I have my function, this is where I actually apply my function to the data. And the way, one thing that you want to understand here is radius is the parameter you want to specify what's the kilometer that you want to apply, what's that number for the distance. Here I have it 50 um, and I, I use a kilometer. Let's, uh, let me show you how, where. Uh, so what I'm doing, I go over all different um, coordinates that I have in the day data. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply this kilometer flag uh, function. Um, I'm going to apply it on the points data um, that I have. And the result is going to be some sort of true false, um, essentially, or zero one. You can make it zero one flag that whether that exists uh, within that uh, distance or not. Um, for each reference point that I have. So in this case, essentially, we go over this for loop is over because we have multiple reference points. That's why we have these four loops. So it goes over the first reference point. Let me show you again. So uh, for Vancouver, whether they exist in the 50 kilometer or not over all the data points that we have. Then it goes over the second, third, all the different reference points, right? Because uh, we actually apply multiple operations here. 
so that's why we have this and then this is the part that actually it does the job for us let me there you go um, this is where I provide the reference um, longitude and lat latitudes this function is as we uh, define it here and it grabs from the point data that's we have the point um, latitude and longitude radius that we specified 50 and is kilometer so the only thing that you want to maybe customize based on your need is what sort of reference data you have and if it's similar to what i have then you can use uh, this but essentially once you understand this locator flag function it gives you a column right it could give you a flag of true or false whether based on any reference and a number of point data whether that's true or not and this is the way that you can apply it based in your old data and you get the result now what's the result would look like it would be something like this all these different columns uh, by, um, are created based on and this is how I name it I just name it based on the city name here uh, Vancouver Victoria you could of course change the flag name the column name however you want and there you go now I have my point data uh, with the flag with the geographical flag and in the last step um, I simply want to just save it in the Google sheet tab it could be maybe if you want to and provide it to non-technical person or just for your own exploration it could be easier to do so so you could run this and there you go i have it in a spreadsheet as we i want it i hope that this tutorial is useful for you it answers what you were looking for looking forward to see you in future videos